Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the structure of the adrenal glands. You should then be able to describe the hormones produced by the adrenal cortex and the adrenal medulla, and all of this is for OCR students only. Now, there is a lot of detail in this video, and it's important that you learn it. Okay, now humans have two adrenal glands, one above each kidney, and I'm showing you the adrenal glands here in red. Each adrenal gland is approximately 5 centimeters long and 3 centimeters from top to bottom. I'm showing you here a cross section of an adrenal gland. Each adrenal gland is surrounded by a capsule. Directly beneath the capsule, we have the adrenal cortex, and in the center, we have the adrenal medulla. Now, both the adrenal cortex and the adrenal medulla secrete hormones, and you need to be able to describe these hormones and their functions. So we're going to start by looking at the hormones secreted by the adrenal cortex. Now, a key idea you need to understand is that the pituitary gland often plays an important role in the secretion of hormones from the adrenal cortex. Now, the adrenal cortex releases steroid hormones, and these fall into three categories. These categories are glucocorticoid, mineralocorticoid, and androgen hormones. Let's start with glucocorticoid hormones. The adrenal cortex secretes glucocorticoids in response to signals from the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. And there are two glucocorticoid hormones that you need to know. These are cortisol and corticosterone. Now, cortisol levels in the blood can vary due to a range of factors, and one of these factors is stress. Stressful events cause the level of cortisol to increase. Cortisol regulates how carbohydrates, proteins, and fats are metabolized. For example, Cortisol can trigger the production of glucose from proteins and fats. Scientists call this gluconeogenesis. This increases the concentration of glucose in the bloodstream, allowing the body to release more energy via respiration. Cortisol also plays a role in regulating blood pressure during stress. Now, cortisol works with another glucocorticoid called corticosterone. Together, these hormones play a role in regulating the immune system and reducing the level of inflammation, for example, during an infection. Now, the hormone aldosterone is also produced by the adrenal cortex. However, aldosterone is an example of a mineralocorticoid hormone, and the secretion of aldosterone by the adrenal cortex is triggered by signals from the kidneys. By controlling the levels of salt and water in the blood, aldosterone plays a key role in regulating blood pressure. Okay, the final group of hormones released by the adrenal cortex are called androgen hormones. Now, there are a large number of different androgens, and some of these are precursors for the male and female sex hormones. Now, I should point out that the main sources of sex hormones are the testes in men and the ovaries in women. However, the adrenal cortex does play an important role, for example, during menopause in women. Okay, so those are the hormones produced by the adrenal cortex. Now, the adrenal medulla produces two different hormones. These hormones are released rapidly during periods of stress, for example, during the fight or flight response. In this case, signals from the sympathetic nervous system trigger the adrenal medulla to release adrenaline and noradrenaline. Adrenaline triggers liver cells to convert glycogen stores to glucose, and the glucose is then released into the bloodstream. Adrenaline also triggers the heart rate to increase, and this increases the blood flow to the brain and muscles. Noradrenaline also increases the heart rate and causes airways in the lungs to widen. This means that more oxygen can be delivered to muscles. Noradrenaline also causes blood vessels to narrow in organs which are not essential for fight or flight, for example in the digestive system. This increases blood pressure and diverts blood away from non-essential organs towards the muscles. Noradrenaline also causes the pupils to widen, allowing more light to enter the eyes, and this increases a person's ability to visualize their surroundings. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe the structure and function of the adrenal glands. 